Leviathan, or the matter, for me and power of a commonwealth, ecclesiastical and civil. Book by Thomas Hobbes. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1651. This is a great audiobook production, created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 16. Of Persons, Authors, and Things Personated. A person what? A person is he whose words or actions are considered, either as his own, or as representing the words or actions of another man, or of any other thing to whom they are attributed, whether truly or by fiction, person natural and artificial. When they are considered as his own, then is he called a natural person, and when they are considered as representing the words and actions of another, then is he a feigned or artificial person. The word person, whence? The word person is Latine, instead whereof the Greeks have prosopon, which signifies the face, as persona in Latine signifies the disguise or outward appearance of a man, counterfeited on the stage. And sometimes more particularly that part of it, which disguiseth the face as a mask or vizard. And from the stage hath been translated to any representer of speech and action, as well in tribunals as theaters. So that a person is the same that an actor is, both on the stage and in common conversation, and to personate is to act or represent himself or another. And he that acteth another is said to be his person or act in his name, in which sense Cicero useth it where he says, Unis sustinio tres personas. Me, adversarii, and judi sis, I bear three persons, my own, my adversaries, and the judges, and is called in diverse occasions, diversly. As a representer, or representative, a lieutenant, a vicar, an attorney, a deputy, a procurator, an actor, and the like. Actor, author, authority. Of persons artificial, some have their words and actions owned by those whom they represent. And then the person is the actor, and he that owneth his words and actions is the author, in which case the actor acteth by authority. For that which in speaking of goods and possessions is called an owner, and in Latin a dominus, in Greek curios, speaking of actions, is called author. And as the right of possession is called dominion, so the right of doing any action is called authority. So that by authority is always understood a right of doing any act, and done by authority, done by commission, or license from him whose right it is. Covenants by authority bind the author. From hence it followeth, that when the actor mocketh a covenant by authority, he bindeth thereby the author, no less than if he had made it himself, ah. And no less subjecteth him to all the consequences of the same. And therefore all that hath been said formerly, chap. 14. Of the nature of covenants between man and man in their natural capacity, is true also when they are made by their actors, representers, or procurators, that have authority from them. So far forth as is in their commission, but no farther. And therefore he that mocketh a covenant with the actor, or representer, not knowing the authority he hath, doth it at his own peril. For no man is obliged by a covenant, whereof he is not author, nor consequently by a covenant made against, or beside the authority he gave, but not the actor. When the actor doth anything against the law of nature by command of the author, if he be obliged by former covenant to obey him, not he, but the author breaketh the law of nature. For though the action be against the law of nature, yet it is not his, but contrarily, to refuse to do it is against the law of nature that forbiddeth breach of covenant. The authority is to be shown. And he that mocketh a covenant with the author, by mediation of the actor, not knowing what authority he hath, but only takes his word. In case such authority be not made manifest unto him upon demand, is no longer obliged, for the covenant made with the author is not valid, without his counter-assurance. But if he that so covenanteth, knew beforehand he was to expect no other assurance than the actor's word, then is the covenant valid, because the actor in this case mocketh himself the author. And therefore, as when the authority is evident, the covenant obligeth the author, not the actor. So when the authority is feigned, it obligeth the actor only, there being no author but himself. Things personated, inanimate. There are few things that are uncapable of being represented by fiction. Inanimate things, as a church, an hospital, a bridge, may be personated by a rector, master, or overseer. But things inanimate cannot be authors, nor therefore give authority to their actors.
Yet the actors may have authority to procure their maintenance, given them by those that are owners or governors of those things. And therefore, such things cannot be personated before there be some state of civil government. Irrational. Likewise, children, fools, and madmen that have no use of reason may be personated by guardians or curators, but can be no authors during that time of any action done by them, longer than when they shall recover the use of reason, they shall judge the same reasonable. Yet during the folly, he that hath right of governing them may give authority to the guardian. But this again has no place but in a state civil, because before such a state, there is no dominion of persons. False gods. An idol, or mere figment of the brain, may be personated, as were the gods of the heathen. Which by such officers as the state appointed, were personated, and held possessions, and other goods, and rights, which men from time to time dedicated, and consecrated unto them. But idols cannot be authors, for idol is nothing. The authority proceeded from the state, and therefore before introduction of civil government, the gods of the heathen could not be persona ted. The true God. The true God may be persona ted. As he was, first, by Moses, who governed the Israelites that were not his, but God's people, not in his own name, with Hoctus at Moses, but in God's name, with Hoctus at Dominus. Secondly, by the Son of Man, his own Son our blessed Savior Jesus Christ, that came to reduce the Jews and induce all nations into the kingdom of his Father. Not as of himself, but as sent from his Father. And thirdly, by the Holy Ghost, or Comforter, speaking and working in the Apostles, which Holy Ghost was a Comforter that came not of himself, but was sent and proceeded from them both. A multitude of men, how one person. A multitude of men are made one person, when they are by one man, or one person, represented, so that it be done with the consent of every one of that multitude in particular. For it is the unity of the representer, not the unity of the represented, that mocketh the person one. And it is the representer that beareth the person, and but one person, and unity cannot otherwise be understood in multitude. Every one is author. And because the multitude naturally is not one, but many, they cannot be understood for one, but many authors, of everything their representative faith, or doth in their name. Every man giving their common representer, authority from himself in particular. And owning all the actions the representer doth, in case they give him authority without stint. Otherwise, when they limit him in what, and how far a he shall represent them, none of them owneth more, than they gave him commission to act. An actor may be many men made one by plurality of voices. And if the representative consists of many men, the voice of the greater number must be considered as the voice of them all. For if the lesser number pronounce, for example, in the affirmative, and the greater in the negative, there will be negatives more than enough to destroy the affirmatives. And thereby the excess of negatives, standing uncontradicted, are the only voice the representative hath. Representatives, when the number is even, and profitable. And a representative of even number, especially when the number is not great, whereby the contradictory voices are oftentimes a qual, is therefore oftentimes mute and uncapable of action. Yet in some cases contradictory voices a qual in number may determine a question, as in condemning or absolving equality of votes, even in that they condemn not, do absolve. But not on the contrary condemn, and that they absolve not. For when a cause is heard, not to condemn, is to absolve, but on the contrary, to say that not absolving is condemning, is not true. The like it is in a deliberation of executing presently, or deferring till another time. For when the voices are a qual, the not decreeing execution is a decree of dilation. Negative voice. Or if the number be oddy, as three, or more, men, or assemblies. Whereof everyone has by a negative voice, authority to take away the effect of all the affirmative voices of the rest, this number is no representative. Because by the diversity of opinions and interests of men, it becomes oftentimes, and in cases of the greatest consequence, a mute person, and unapt, as for may things else. So for the government of a multitude, especially in time of war, of authors there be two sorts. The first simply so called, which I have before defined to be him, that owneth the action of another simply. The second is he, that owneth an action, or covenant of another conditionally, that is to say, he undertaketh to do it, if the other doth it not, at, or before a certain time. 
and these authors condition all, are generally called sureties, in Latine fijessers, and sponsors, and particularly for debt, prades, and for appearance before a judge, or magistrate, fades. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button, and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.